the weekly warm pipe. Ah, uh, yes. Look at you, Jay. You're looking good. I'm here. I'm You're here. I'm, I'm, I'm moving in here. <laughs> I just, I want to be here in my best form, but technology, as we've said multiple times, doesn't like me. So, anyway, welcome to the weekly warp pipe. That's right. <laughs> no more spooky episodes. That's pretty fun for for October. That would be good themed. Um, I guess maybe we can do themed stuff for Christmas. No, we're going to talk about turkeys for the next four weeks. Oh, we could do that. Turkey, yes. turkey games. Turkey. I only everything. know one turkey themed game, and that's the uh, the South Park game. I think there's a level where you can throw snowballs at turkeys. Sounds pretty cool. So that's about my knowledge of Thanksgiving. There's an Indian games. game called Wampum. Where oh, you have that's to murder true. pilgrims. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not really. That doesn't really happen. I could do a live stream of that for one of the days. And you could. Wampum. I definitely Wampum. remember the cover. Has Mega Dan played that one? Probably. I feel like he probably did. I got really close to beating it, but it, yeah, it didn't happen. At least you tried. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing quite a few games. I'm hopefully finishing up a few. Um, should be done with Luigi's Mansion. Playing that guy on Halloween. I started, I, I did a live stream, I think, the week before that. I am at the final boss, um, so I'm hopefully beating that. And then I still need to install. I got the new Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2 Ooh. for PS5. Um, we're talking about possibly maybe streaming that Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to put a poll on my YouTube page, see if people want to see that. I never know if I should be you know, streaming the newer games or people strictly want to see the the retro stuff, like maybe gamecube back i try to do a lot of nes on there i feel like more people come in for that but i got a ps5 i mean i could stream on it so yeah maybe might as well mix it up yeah i mean i definitely would love to stream more than once a week it's just tough obviously having a baby <laughs> i mean if, it, if i had it my way i'd stream five nights a week and have a video out every fourth to third three or four days you know so, oh yeah i mean before we had gwen and Steph was still pregnant. I remember I'd, you know, come home from work and she wouldn't get home for another few hours. So I'd almost jump on like TikTok and do like a vertical stream for an hour, go on Instagram stream, jump. I was like as much as I could possibly to maybe get myself out there or whatever and try to grow. Figure the more more times you stream, more people hear of you. I don't know. Jay has muted himself and lost his microphone somehow. <laughs> Always technology issues here, here on the weekly warp pipe. There we go. You're back. Can you hear me? Yeah, it sounds different, though. Did your microphone change? It might be this. What's crazy. Why I literally did nothing. Hang on. Nothing became unplugged. Yeah, I don't know which which microphone is live on Jay. Is yeah. it a headset microphone or the Yeti? I don't know, dude. This whole system is just <laughs> decided to like hate me. You guys want to help support the podcast? You could <laughs> jump over to patreon.com slash Russ Lyman. I'm going to start a fund, I think, to get Jay a new uh, computer set up. <laughs> dude, this computer is... Like, I don't even understand. Okay, there's the Yeti. Hang on, give me a second. Wait, it went away again. <laughs> All right, good audio back. There we go. All right, sorry. My apologies. I didn't I didn't even touch anything. I don't know how that happened. Who knows? I don't know. I think my I think this this closet is haunted. Someone was asking about this door. Yes. It's literally just stored. Like it's that's cold in there. And there's there's no insulation. There's probably a demon in there or three that that uh haunt me. So I better shut it. <laughs> Get a draft. Yeah, it's it's cold in there. I think I posted like a game room tour that Rick did to just kind of show them like this is what Jay's room looked like. It's there's literally a, a walk-in closet. There's a wall right here that separates the this side from that side. My wife's clothes used to be all right here. Uh, you can still see a little bit of the remnants of a rack right there that stayed there. 
but yeah, just in a closet. Did, I, I made the mistake of not buying a house with a basement or a fourth bedroom, so here I am. You're welcome. <laughs> you, you can. That's right. My game room's technically in the other bedroom. There you go. So we'll, we'll see how long it lasts there. We do want to get a house, but it's expensive. That's right. Yeah, man, it's ridiculous. Like, uh, thanks, Joe Biden. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I will right, we'll get into this week's topic. It was suggested by Michael Bennett. Um, and it's when it with Michael Bennett. He wanted to know what was the first five games we remember playing. Getting into video games. Um, I took it as home consoles. I didn't use any that's, arcade games. That's what I took it as. Right. So it's definitely hard kind of remembering back. It's like how old I wonder I was. Had to be, I don't know, 10, 14, something like that, I want to say. You, you know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. I have some documented pictures of some of my earliest memories of gaming. Oh, there you go. Oh, There's look at me that. and my dad and my grandpa sitting around a big television that sits on the floor with the wood grain. Playing Atari. I'm trying to make out the game. It looks kind of like uh, uh, what what the heck is it? Not Space Invaders. What's the other one where the the things come from the the sky and you have to shoot them? Is it like Defender? Defender Centipede. I, I don't know. But what's interesting <laughs> if you look in the corner here, you can see two more games by this by my finger right here in mm -hmm. the controller and a game on the floor. It looks like. So I have that picture. And then uh, I think this is my brother or my aunt. I can't tell if it's a boy or a girl because my brother had long rock and roll hair. But there's nice. that one, too. And you see this little character here? Yeah, it's like a plush or something. It's His name is Bumble Lion, and he's from the Wuzzles. So just Google search Bumble Lion from the Wuzzles, and you can see what that guy looks like. Nice. Yeah. I don't think we talked about the wuzzles before. Nope. <laughs> but we did now. There anyway, you what's your what's your what's the first game you remember, Russ? Um, I put on my list uh asteroids from Atari. Okay. Atari twenty six hundred. So I did get my cousin's uh Atari twenty six hundred as like a hand me down. I ended up getting a twenty six hundred and a seventy eight hundred. You know, like a milk crate, crate full of games. But I know I definitely spent a ton of time on asteroids and my um, technique or what would you say? A strategy. My strategy for that game was not to move. You can move your ship around and you can like disappear. But I would just stay dead center and just shoot the asteroids and just move like, you know, in a circle, clockwise, in a circle or whatever. And I definitely survived for quite some time super basic gameplay and sound effects but i don't know i was drawn to it you go for high score on atari there was no like endings in the atari games that i know of it was just high score challenges essentially gotcha and so, it was set up it was to say it was set up just like you would think it's on tv on a metal cart in the basement with gotcha like, <laughs> wheel it out wheel it closer to the couch play it there so this is this was me uh and these pictures I just showed for those of you watching on YouTube. That's probably 85, 86. I was probably about four or five. I was probably about five years old in this picture. And uh I remember playing that that Atari, and I think my brother gave it to me. I'm not exactly sure how I got it. Either my brother or my aunt, one of those two people probably gave it to me. And um I remember they left it for me and I was like, oh my god, I got an Atari, this is crazy. And uh, the but the only game I really remember playing is Space Invaders mm -hmm. on that Atari. That's the first gaming memory I have. And and I had no idea that these pictures existed until oh, about okay. a year ago. My sister was like, hey, Jay, I found a bunch of pictures from, of you at mom's house. And I just figured you might would want them. So she like gave me this whole stack of pictures and I got to it. And I was like, oh, my God, there's pictures of me playing Atari. This is incredible. Nice. Um, You'll have to uh, have you 
taken a picture of it to have like a digital copy of the image. Yeah. Like, what you mean? Sorry. Like, oh, like, <laughs> like, like put it on my phone. Yeah, yeah, to get it on your phone or so it's online or whatever. Oh, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I'm sure. Well, it, had I not deleted my Instagram, I'm sure it's on my Instagram. Was on my Instagram when I still had an NES addict Instagram before I went crazy and deleted it. Don't know why I did that. <laughs> but you could follow us on the Weekly Warp Pipe on Instagram if you want. That. That's right. No pictures. I'll, maybe I'll maybe I'll send it to Russ and he can put that on there. Do it. There we go. <laughs> but nice. yeah, that's so Space Invaders. And then I guess whatever these two games were, which I don't recognize them because I didn't play a lot of Atari. What's, what's funny, and I have one more Atari game on my list, and I believe it's the one that maybe your aunt or brother is playing. Oh, yeah. Right there, I want to say, because it, it kind of reminded me of uh, Moon Patrol. Moon Patrol. Yeah. You could throw that picture back up there. I want to say that's that's you what's think, on screen. You think that's Moon Patrol? No, no. The or do other you one. think that's Moon Patrol? Yeah, because it kind of. Uh, I mean, it's hard to see it because I'm looking at a picture through a <laughs> web camera TV screen here. Yeah, it kind of kind of looks like it. I'm not 100 percent sure. Those look like little buildings to me and maybe a street. Right. But I know the, the object in Moon Patrol, you're a. Um, and moon lander on on the moon and you're going along and there's craters that you would jump over and you get that little anti like gravity like float in or whatever land but then you would have to shoot rocks so sometimes you'd have to shoot a rock before you jump the the crater okay and and there would be spaceships that come out so when you hit the fire button you would shoot uh horizontal and vertical at the same time so you'd kind of try to line it up um with what you're shooting and then I don't know. I had a good time playing that one. Tried to get pretty far. Obviously, further levels you go, there's more stuff on screen. There's more things to jump, and it just just gets wild. But I'm gonna say that does not look like Moon Patrol. Maybe maybe that's um, it's got to be one of the space games. Let's say Defender or I don't know. This one looks like a city. Mm -hmm. Those look like city buildings, and it looks like a road at the bottom, like a big brown road with the dots in the middle. Right. I don't know. If you recognize this game, tell us in the comments below. Um, the the game that I remember next, Russ, and this is my most definitive Atari memory. And I've told this story a thousand times, but I'll tell it again because why not? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, you got something for me? Okay. Let's see if I could do a screen share. So it wasn't um Moon Patrol that is in that here but it is this looks pretty much like it defender oh dude that's exactly what it is so, yeah yeah it has the cityscape and it has the score and that's middle. it and th those little dots i must have saw where the like if you look at this picture down here it has like the yellow things on the bottom mm -hmm. can you go to that one the picture down and to the right of the one you're at oh okay let's see let me go over here because there's like little yellow things or oh, that that works too why do they look blue? I guess it depends what level you're on or like, I don't know. Can you move your mouse back to the main page? This one. And then come down and to the right, right there. Oh, you this just one? passed it. Yeah. Click that. Yeah. See how they like, they look like yellow. Yeah. Dude, that's exactly what this game is. All right. We, so we, we have defender on here. Sweet. I definitely played that one a lot for sure. Well, now I want to get a copy of defender because now I know that's what I was playing in the game. And the artwork, yeah, it has this like chick on the cover, like total like seventies, eighties, like right. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Connor, definitely Sarah Connor looking. Yeah, like. but yeah, exactly. <laughs> CX two six zero nine Defender. That's so cool. I didn't know I had Defender. There we go. But okay, sorry to get get back to the story. I was at like a dollar store. My mom saw a big discount bin of atari games she said jay pick out a game they're 50 cents what did i get i got et because why not because it was the mid 80s and i loved et so uh took et home i quickly fell in a pit and i remember thinking as like a five-year-old kid this game is stupid <laughs> <laughs> You're like blast! I'm not having any fun with this. So the only the only Atari game I still own, which is somewhere back here, is ET. I got rid of all the rest of them. Oh, okay. 
And have you played it since or no? Price. I had an Atari it. probably three years ago, mm -hmm. and I played it on there a few times. But I've since sold the Atari, and I only have just the game, just ET, just because the thing that blows my mind is ET is the first game I ever bought brand new. And okay. When I got back into retro games ten years ago, uh, and I found the, out the lore behind. It, E.T. and how terrible it was it blew my mind that that was the first game I ever bought I was like of course of course it is of course E.T. was the first game I ever bought you know I don't know it just seemed kind of serendipitous a little bit I like yeah. I, I like that that's the first brand new game I ever had well it's like again it was based on a franchise that you enjoyed the movie and you're like oh, I love the movie like they made a game I enjoy video games so it's got to be good right I it mean, was it was like a playbook straight out of LJN Let's get the best possible, you know, license mm -hmm. and let's ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> except for except for Jaws. Jaws is awesome. I will say I don't I don't think I got E.T. early on. I'm pretty sure I do have a copy of it, but I don't know if it was in the, the bin of games that I got from my cousins or I just didn't want to play it. But it's certainly confusing. Yeah. And it was rushed out, uh, essentially, for the holiday season. They wanted it so, you know, people would buy it for the holiday, for Christmas. And definitely could have been more programmed to it to make it better, enjoyable, and all that. But they're like, get it out, push it out, push it out. Have you seen the commercial for it? I'm sure I have. Yeah, it's really. I mean, ET's in it, right? Oh, it's so good. It's like it's, <laughs> the commercial is better than what the game is. It's like early '80s at its finest, dude. If I could, if I had a time machine, I was telling my kids the other day, I was like, "Man, I wish I could take you guys back to the '80s just to see how rad it was." It was so. It had. I know it's like such a teenage teenager thing to say, but it was like a vibe, you know. Like it had this. I don't know. Do you do you remember it that way, Russ? Like it was just. Something about it, man. The 80s were amazing. Well, it's tough to say, like, if it was the time or if it was because we we're kids and we saw stuff differently like that way. Right. It's, because I feel, I feel like I just going to the store was like an adventure. We're going to Bradley's. We're going yeah, to it was, like, dude. Like, yeah, it was. Let me check adventure. out the toys. Let me let me roam around the aisles. But like me going to Target now, I don't have that feeling. <laughs> you, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe it was maybe it's because. We saw saw things in a different light. Well, let's say this, that, then bring up the point. Like, I'm curious on what our kids are going to think about in 20 years or whatever. Are they going to be like, oh, I totally remember going to Target and getting Super Mario Wonder or whatever. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I try to, like, I try to get my son as much crap as he wants. I spoil him to death. But because uh, mm -hmm. I, I hope he, like, finds something he looks back on when he's 30 you know 32 33 you're like when the nostalgia bug starts biting you and thinks back he's like oh man dad remember when i had this or that and i'll be like guess what son unlike my parents it's in the attic i saved it for you <laughs> saved everything i got the boxes too so you don't have to spend all your money rebuying them <laughs> nice so but yeah that's those are the first two games i remember playing yeah well it's funny because we both had uh, Atari. Atari. Well, we're, 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 I mean, Russ and I are like <laughs> six months apart, if that. Right. It's very similar memories. So then I moved on to Nintendo games. Same. Um, my dad ended up getting me um, the action set, I believe. Yeah, we got the action set. So the next game on my list I put was Super Mario Brothers slash Duck Hunt. There you go. So you got that zapper gun on there. Of course, I played Mario first because it looked cooler. It's yeah. Got this guy on the cover and there's like fire. You're like, yep. all right, what is this? Yep. What's this? Um, and seeing those graphics compared to Atari, you're like, what? Yep. What is this? I can actually make out what this is. Right. You're like, this is like the arcade at home. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so I certainly rad. played Mario a, a ton. Um, how far I got? Probably not super far. I imagine I beat first castle. So yeah, it took some time. Right. My dad would often play as well, but I don't know if he was much better than I was at it. Yeah. And then trying out Duck Hunt, 
I thought it was neat because they did have other games on there. Had the uh, the disc. They throw the clay disc. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could shoot that. So it's like switching it up. No, no. Let me ducks. ask you, Russ. Did you put the zapper right up to the TV? I don't think I knew. Like to just like let me cheat, like right against the screen. <laughs> I mean, no, you you could just shoot a light bulb and then you get it. Oh, really? That's funny. I think that's I think that's a trick. If you just shoot at the light bulb, I think it's an automatic hit. Oh, wow. Even easier. Even easier. <laughs> um, I yeah, did. Let me ask you this. Do you remember liking the way it sounded that bang, bang, bang sound when you pulled the trigger? <laughs> You know I'm, I'm sure because because it, it pretty much mimic any of the like fake guns we got back in the 80s. Like, so that was satisfying sound like it made something made some sound. Right. Yeah. I think it would have been less if you're just you don't hear anything and you're just pulling that trigger. Yeah, I like the noise it made because it's got that spring in there. So yep. you, you feel like you're shooting something because I, I also got I don't know if you ever got these, but they had these um like pellet guns. Mm-hmm. where it was like rubber bullets yeah almost so you could just get those at whatever kmart right uh, bradley's or whatever and get those and i had fun firing those so i felt similar to that yeah um now let me ask you this gray zapper or orange zapper i'm pretty sure it was the gray zapper Ooh, and you were og i had an orange yeah yeah i'm pretty sure it was the the gray one so um my first memory of playing an NES game, and I, I think this is my first memory. I could be wrong. But before I got the NES, I think I was in Myrtle Beach at my cousin Gina's house. And I think we rented an NES. And I remember oh, having okay. it up in her room and playing it in her room, Super Mario Brothers. And uh, that was the first time I really remember playing it because I think it was, I don't, my my memory of the NES doesn't really start till around 88. I don't I may have known one kid before I moved from North Carolina to South Carolina that had a Nintendo, but my memory is so fuzzy on I feel like I feel like they were like we got a Nintendo and I feel like I saw it in his house one time. Mm-hmm. But at the same time I don't know if maybe they just got like a VCR. You know, like I don't know what it, it was something <laughs> on top of their TV and I Okay. This is a this is like the fuzziest and briefest of memories, and I could just be making it up, but I feel like I saw something there. So, I was gonna say side side note, yeah, real quick. I was daydreaming the other day, and I was like, I wonder if we'll ever get to a point, right, with technology, where we can visit these memories a little bit more clearer, right? Almost like a computer, you're pulling up a file, and it's like, can they tap into the brain somehow Ooh. to be like? Oh, I want to remember that. I want to relive. Oh, it's like playing playing a YouTube video. I want to relive playing are we gonna, Super Mario for the first time. Are we going to plug like, in and it's going to be like Singularity? <laughs> this is going to be a whole other topic, another podcast, but I was daydreaming about that. <laughs> I like that, Russ. I Who like knows? That. Maybe we'll get there. Anyways. Maybe. And then we'll all put the mark of the beast on our wrists <laughs> so we can pay for our food. And- not but yeah, anyway. All right, I gotta digress. Um uh what's next? Um so the next memory I have, and because Nintendo really starts to um become like this part of pop culture that I'm paying attention to uh in second grade, uh which was uh summer into fall of nineteen eighty eight, I start thinking about Nintendo Power. I start hearing about kids at school that have Nintendos. And we moved from a very small church in Four Oaks, North Carolina, to what felt as at the time like a much larger church, which was also very small, but bigger than the one I was at there in uh, in Fountain Inn, South Carolina, just for those of you in the southeast that want to know where I live. Um, And uh, all the kids at this church this new church I went to, they all had this thing called Nintendo. And then, and then that's when I really start remembering the commercials, mm-hmm. like, uh, Zelda, tech tights, levers, oh, you know, all those crazy commercials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and like all these kids had Nintendo. And, um, I remember going to my friend 
Daniel Rampy's house. Shout out to Daniel Rampy. And that, the house that he lived in is not even there anymore. It's, it blows my mind. It's just like it's just an empty lot. Um, I remember playing in his tiny little bedroom. Are you ready? Okay. Contra. Nice. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> and I remember, I, I don't know if we, we, if we did, it wasn't very many times. We, okay. we would play co-op most of the time. Right. Good two was, player at the same time. I was time, always sure. falling in the hole. You know, yeah. I don't know if we made it past the first level. Really? If we well, did. Because you, you had the three guys. So you didn't know the Konami code. Yeah. Then. Well, no, I think Daniel knew the Konami code. Maybe. I, I can't remember. I think he tried to put it in. He couldn't do it. I don't remember. But I just remember we didn't get far. Mm-hmm. We might have got to the second level. Okay. But I was dying a lot. But having a good time, maybe. Oh, I was yeah, oh yeah, I loved it. I thought the graphics were great. I remember controlling really well. Mm-hmm. Um it was the first time that I was like, oh man, this is cool. It really surprises me that I never asked for that specific game as a kid for like Christmas or our birthday. Because it was really cool. But yeah, Contra was, is like missed opportunity. the fourth game I remember playing. Okay. Definitely a good one for sure. Yep. Uh what did I put on my list? Fourth one I remember playing. I put Kung Fu. Remember this one? I actually have a Kung Fu memory, but it was much later. Okay. Yeah. It was at my sister's house. This kid came over and and had it. And I remember thinking, oh, I really like this game. Actually, sorry to go off on a tangent on you. But (laughs) when I got back into NES, the first three games I bought was uh, the non-Mike Tyson version of Punch-Out!, Kung Fu and Excite Bike. Nice. Yeah, based off that memory. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely remember it's a black box game. The the cover on there, you know, 80s karate is like really big. You got karate kid out, you got ninja movies. So I was like, okay, this seems pretty simple. It's very ar- arcade based. I believe it is an arcade game as well. Yeah, I think so, for sure. Um, and you basically are going, you know, right to left, left to right. Just beating up guys, pretty simple. Get a high score. Yeah, thought it was cool. Had neat music. The music and- was good. The controls were pretty good. Um, it was easy, but challenging. Because it's it- easy to pop in and get through, you know, the first three levels or whatever. And yeah, then the last two is where it really amps up. Starts getting hectic, and then you want to keep going because you get that nice like cut scene too. I mm-hmm. thought that was neat. You get the cut scene where. Uh, Sylvia's kidnapped, and you got Mister X laughing, and you're uh, like, "Oh, uh, I gotta uh, get my uh, girlfriend." Uh, 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 right. uh, uh. Or the yeah, you're going upstairs. up the stairs, dude. Kung Fu is such a simple game, but it's so good. What's uh, I remember someone either NES Complex mentioned it, or maybe Tyler did. Um, there was a uh, in a Nintendo Power magazine mentioned of a Kung Fu two. Ooh. coming out which never came out and i was like oh wow. i would have been dope it would have been can make it now so where's the homebrew community that's right get on there do do a rom hack john kung riggs fu. where you're at kung fu do <laughs> but yeah kung fu definitely remember playing that one whether i rented it or had it that i don't know because then a lot of a lot of times um i remember playing the nes was at my dad's i'd go to my dad's on the weekend friday night we go to the video store he gets some movies and then i get to rent an nes game so it's probably one of those weekends i grabbed kung fu and played it and had a good time here you go all right russ are you ready for my last game that i remember playing okay so we've got space invaders we've got et we've got mario we got contra my friend Daniel Rampy, same kid, same house, same place. Probably played in the same weekend. RBI Baseball. Oh, okay. I remember because it was a great two player game. Mm-hmm. I could play versus him, and I'm pretty sure he destroyed me. <laughs> yeah, I was more probably getting struck that. out. Yeah, he was just knocking him out of the park. But um, simple controls, you know, I like running the bases, I like hitting it. Uh, but yeah, RBI Baseball. Yeah, I definitely played a bunch of the sports games on NES. I didn't play too much sports in school, but I was like, yeah, NES, sure, why not? 
Yeah. I mean, it's way better than what I played in the Atari with basketball, <laughs> football and all those games. I'm like, what, is, what am I even looking at? So this was like light years ahead. You're like, oh, I could actually see the characters. Not that I knew a lot of the rosters. Right. Or whatever could relate. I'm just like, all right, I'll just pick the Yankees or you know, right. whatever sounds like good. Right. Whatever's right. popular. The Bulls. Yeah. The yeah. Hornets. <laughs> but I could see that being. And it's like you said, um, going over your friend's house, it was hard to find like these two player games you could play together. Yeah. Where Mario wasn't that. You'd have to play until the other person dies and then you'd be able to play. Yeah. Like, well, I want to play at the same time. So a lot of sports games, easy for that. You know what? This this topic has made me think of a good maybe topic we should follow up with in a couple of weeks, if not next week. Oh, okay. Just games we played at friends' houses. You know? Oh yeah. I can think of some stories because sure. I, I I know a lot of games I played at friends' houses of games that I didn't have, and I mm-hmm. only experienced them at other kids' houses. Right, and that's it's definitely a good point because it's like it's how we get exposed to these new games. Because mm-hmm. you're only getting, like we said, we're only getting, maybe you get a new NES game on your birthday and on Christmas. From Christmas of 89 till fall of 92, when I sold it to pay for the, help pay for the Super NES, mm-hmm. I had five games. Six, if you count t- Turtles, which I took back. I had, <laughs> I had Mario Duck Hunt, mm-hmm. Skate or Die, Batman, King of Kings, Mario 3, and if you count Ninja Turtles, which I took back like a day or two later. Ninja Turtles. That was all I had in that time frame. So everything else played at friends' houses. That's it. Yeah, that'd be a good topic. I'll mark, yep. I'll mark it down. I like it. I will say um, my last game you did mention, I put on there, and it was uh, Skate or Die. Skate or Die. Skateboarding was pretty big in the 80s. Mm-hmm. I wasn't great at it, but my cousins um, would skate and my dad lived with my aunt over there. So the cousins had all the cool stuff and I would see them skateboard. So there was a skateboarding game on NES. So I was like, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. And it was pretty neat because it essentially had a bunch of mini games Yeah, in it. You can go try them individually or you go to the full, I forgot what the heck it was called, where you would the tournament, the tournament or whatever. And you would, you got the high jump, you got the freestyle, the joust, downhill yep. jam. Yep. Um, I think there was one more. But I thought it was cool with the the guy at the shop looking wild. Punk rock. Looked like Fat Mike from No Effects. I, <laughs> I was like, this guy's cool. And you know, it's got killer music. And some of it, and again, with this two player action, you can play with a friend. Some of the controls I don't really get or understand. Well, there's regular but... foot and goofy foot. Regular foot is if you skate with your left foot forward. Goofy is your right foot forward. But the controls were backwards if you skated goofy. Oh, I see. Choosing that. Okay. That's like, what it was. I'm like, I'm like, what would it really matter in a video game? Which foot you chose? Yeah. Regular or goofy. But... At least it didn't have Mongo. Mongo is where you push a skateboard with your foot in the back of the board instead of the front, like you're supposed to. Oh, okay. Only weirdos push Mongo. It looks so awkward. You push with your foot on the back of the board, and then you have to like swing your hip over. It just, oh, okay. it's, it just oh. looks so ugly. I think I push off Goofy, but then ride regular. So because I push off with my right foot, but my left foot's on the front of the board. And Do you push I... off with your right foot on the back of the board? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because then I would put my right foot on the back of the board when I would ride it. So you push with your left foot on the front, you're pushing with your right, and then you step on the back. Yeah. That's normal. That's how it is. Now, if you that's push with your right foot on the back <laughs> with your left foot and then step on the front, that's Mongo and, and weird. Weird. And we don't do that. We don't. <laughs> No, weird is no, no, just kidding. Um, but yeah, I mean, Tony Hawk being real big, not real big, but big. No, he was. No, he was. He was in, huge. In the 80s, 80s and you're yep. like, okay, there wasn't a Tony Hawk game, but you're like, this is skateboarding. It was Tony Hawk and Steve Caballero. Skate videos, you know, seeing the skate videos, seeing skateboarding happening while you're watching free fall and music video. 
you're like skateboard was big so. and i had i had a pair of uh airwalks at one point but the mm-hmm. pa- the shoes that were really cool in the late 80s vision streetwear just go on google and type in 1988 vision streetwear shoes and look at how rad all those shoes were they were so freaking cool i had a pair of black and blue high tops with the big white vision streetwear logo on the side they almost like converse and i just thought i was the coolest these things that's exactly what my shoes looked like except for black and gray they were black and white or oh, sorry wow. blue blue and black i i don't think i ever remember these Dude. they're almost like a converse but and that shirt right there at the top with the just vision streetwear on the box nope two over oh right yeah. there if you wore that shirt you were the raddest also <laughs> russ what movie sp- was sponsored by this company where they wore these clothes think video and it games came, um like recently or it was in the 80s this was 1989 or 90 i'm video, assuming a video game movie come on it's the most popular game movie we quote it all the time do we street fighter it's so bad oh the wizard the wizard if you look at the clothes they wear in the wizard came out in the 90s <laughs> what's the what's the kid's name that says that oh um oh, what is his name now now i can't think of it type if you type if you type his name in, he'll be wearing a vision streetwear shirt let's see where do i go here it's uh, so bad the wizard it's so bad just type that in it should come up what's that kid's name I don't know if it's gonna say his name, but there he is. Yeah, if you can see his if there was like another picture of him. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like the shirt he has under this black shirt. Yeah, I think it's a Vision Streetwear shirt. Because that's you can see him later in the sh- in the show wearing those. Oh here, well I could maybe bring up a YouTube. Lucas. Tip. His name's Lucas. Lucas. <laughs> Lucas has all fifty. Yeah, Lucas. You might yeah, you might just have to type in Lucas or something. Right there, he's almost wearing like a kimono. When are they at? Is there a clip where they're at the the competition? Oh, does he have it on there? Yeah. Not 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 at the house. Yeah, I don't know if there's if you could type in Lucas, uh, the wizard. Uh, well, just the the end thing. Yeah, Nintendo World Champions or whatever it's called. I don't know. (laughs) Nintendo World Champions. Sorry, we're going down a rabbit hole on... Oh, see, it says Vision. See his shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, Vision. Vision. It says it all over his shirt. (laughs) I can't zoom in, but... So it's a full print shirt. Yeah, full print. And then he has... Okay, on the back is his uh, like number for the contestants there. Yep, and it's a black shirt and it gray. It says Vision all around it. I feel like what he's wearing also, so you have a patterned shirt. His shorts also have some pattern on it as well. I would have went with a solid the color 80s. shirt. Probably had on some uh, jams, bro. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> yep. Nice. Vision Visions. streetwear. Bring it back. Bring it back. If, you know what? You, you know what? I think I think they brought it back at Target. I think you can find Vision Streetwear skateboards at Target. Oh, okay. Yep. Next time you're in there, look and see. Keep an eye out. So, you can let us know in the comments if you guys are watching on YouTube. What was the uh, you know first five video games, or even just the first video game you remember playing? I feel like I should write it down for Gwen when when I get her to actually play one. So she won't forget. There you write go. it somewhere. I'll, obviously, I'll probably document it. We'll probably be live streaming. <laughs> yep. Be like Tyler's dad. Absolutely. Yeah, I ended up watching his last video he did with um, the October like trick or treating stuff, and his dad filmed them going to the mall yep. to do trick or treating because it was so cold outside where they were. So they went to each store in the mall giving out candy, and there was like. Sam Goody, there was a video yep. game store. And there was it, a kid dressed like Beetlejuice. 
Yeah, and and even Tyler's costume was monsters in my pocket. Monsters in my pocket, which he started like, the video with their music. Did you notice that? Oh, I didn't. I noticed uh, it after, like when he put the mask down, and then I saw the logo for Monster in My Pocket. That's what I, I saw like, too. But I heard the I heard the music at the beginning. I was like, oh, that's perfect for Halloween. And then I noticed later the suit matched it, and I was like, ah, oh, I see what you did there, Tyler. I'm Classic. paying attention to you, Tyler. <laughs> Sweet. Um, hey, if you guys want to call into the show, you could leave a message for for us to check out. Phone number is 949-682-9277. Give us a buzz. Tell us some topics you want. Tell us how we're doing. Yeah. Um, a quick shout out to our Patreons. We got Dan and Nicole's Treasures Untold, Joe Sheevy, Trace Living Good, Samantha Chang, Rodney Torres, and Retroholic 16 for supporting this and my live streams and helping out the top tier Patreons. But we Thank all the Patreons as well, right. whatever you can do. Uh, anything else, Shay? I think that covers oh, think so. most of it. That's it. That's all we got, guys. That's all we got. We're done. We're, We're done. We appreciate here. you listening. Thanks for checking out the weekly Warp Pipe. If you need more episodes, we do ones on Wednesday for Warp Pipe Wednesday. And you can always find us at theweeklywarppipe.com for all your awesome needs. That's right. Only if they're awesome. If they're yeah. less than awesome, take your needs elsewhere. As always, I'm Russ Lyman. Keep your world fun bit by bit. We'll see you.